For more on the growing legislation targeting the LGBTQ community, especially the trans community, I'm joined by two people who can speak about this issue both personally and professionally. Ileana Ross Layton and represented Florida in the House of Representatives from 1989 to 2019 as a Republican. Her son, Rodrigo Hang Layton, is the executive director of the National Center for Transgender Equality. Thank you both for joining us. Um, Congresswoman, I want to start with you. I was doing research for this interview. I was looking at something you said back in 2019. You said at the time you had hoped for the GOP, that the party was becoming more tolerant and more accepting when it came to these issues. I have to ask, four years later, has that hope faded at all? It hasn't faded because for a long time I was in the hope business and I'm still in the hope business. There's a deluge of, uh, of stories about what is apparently the number one threat to our American way of life, which is trans youth. Yeah, and I'm looking around and I say, we don't feel that way about Rigo, our son, who's a transgender male. I don't think that we're blinded by the, our love for Rigo. We see all of our children in the same way, unconditional love, uh, because what's the alternative? Homelessness, drug use, kids getting kicked out of their homes, even contemplating suicide. And what we see is in Rigo, he's got wonderful values of kindness and, and uh, looking out for, uh, for our community. We couldn't ask for a better kid. And I wish that my party and our community and everybody's family would look at their children in the same way, no matter what they're going through. It's appalling. This is the low point for my, for my party. I'm proud to be a Republican, but we better get our act together. Rodrigo, I can see it brings a smile to your face to hear your mom talk about you in such glowing terms. I have to say, as someone who focuses on transgender policy, this deluge your mom was talking about this year, what has it been like for you? Well, it's been heartbreaking for myself, but so many transgender people to feel like now there is a target being put on our backs, and especially for transgender youth, for our kids, who are really being single-handedly uh, targeted for all this negative legislation. Um, you know, as was shared, I, I was very fortunate that my family accepted me. I'm a transgender man. That means I was uh, raised as a girl, uh, but then transitioned to live as the man I know myself to be. And I'm so grateful that my parents said from the very beginning, even if they were shocked and even if they didn't understand it, they said, you're still our kid. We love you no matter what. But what I'm really working on and what National Center for Transgender Equality as an organization works on is for that to be everybody's experience, for that to be the norm instead of something special. Now you know why we're so proud of Rigo. Uh, he's 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 got his act together. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. <laughs> Rodrigo, what will it take to make it so that your experience is a much more common experience? It's going to take everyday Americans getting to know their transgender neighbors. Transgender people are part of the fabric of society, just like everybody else. And the good news is that we've always seen that the more that everyday Americans get to know another transgender person the more they realize we're not some boogeyman under the bed, they will see through all of the myths and the misinformation and come to see all of this legislation for what it is, which is just hostility, and they'll stand up to it. Congresswoman, for parents of trans kids who are struggling to accept their children or for just everyday citizens who are watching this debate right now and they're struggling to fully understand this issue, just as a mom, what is your advice to them? What is at stake here is your son or your daughter's survival as a person. And you, we want all of our children to be productive citizens and, and positive uh, contributors to our American way of life. And all of these issues are family issues. But we shouldn't have a one-size-fits-all law uh, that, that bans uh, you know, gender care. Uh, for for individuals, uh, I think that's uh, that's that's horrific. That's barbaric. You know, the GOP. We our our history is that we're a party of 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 uh, local control, local authority, free expression, and now we've got a one size fits all for transgender uh, youth, and I think that that's wrong. So I'm optimistic that things will get better rather than get worse. Congresswoman and Rodrigo, mom and son, thank you both for joining us for this conversation. We appreciate it. Thank you, Joe. It. You're looking good, Rigo. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> you too. <laughs>